name is Yang Xiao. I'm from China and I live in Beijing. And photography is not my job, it's more like my personal hobby. And I worked and studied as an user experience designer. And since I love traveling, so in recent years I work for a Chinese travel company and I'm in charge of the design department. I think I always like photography. I travel quite a lot, and during the trip, I always taking fo photos. And I think it was like eight or nine years ago, the time I went to Spain. And I, I, I remember it was my my first time to see the entire Milky Way over there. You know, I'm from Beijing, and I grew up here. So with the light or the the air pollution here, it's not easy to see very clear stars here. So you can imagine the first time when I see the Milky Way, I got really excited and that really got me into the night photography. And uh, talking about the first proper light painting uh, experience, I think it was back to 2012. At that moment, my plan was to visit a communist monument, the name is Busruja in Bulgaria. Uh, but at that time, it, there were there wasn't much information about it online, so I contacted a British photographer whose name is Mark Nail, and he has been to that place several times. So I asked him about the questions, and in the end, we we, we traveled to Busluja together. And during the trip, he showed me the technique of light painting, and I feel wow, that is really interesting. And we did many amazing photos over there, and. I think to be honest that those are still my favorite works and so since then I started to know what is like painting and I started to learn about it. That's how it started. Uh, I think most of the time I shoot in abundant places about those mass concrete monument or brutalist architecture or urban structures and I really love them and I enjoy exploring them and I think different from the typical urbex shot, uh, light painting really gives me a chance to create something different, different from the original look of the place. I think in general there are three parts in my creative process. Uh, before the trip and during and after the trip. So before the trip, it's all about doing the research about the location, like where are they and how to get there and how is how is the environment. And once once we arrive there, I would like to go around the whole area first and to check uh, what is the best location, what is the best perspective. And most of the time, uh, we do it at night, but if during the trip I have enough time, I would like to do it during the daylight first to have a better view and then uh, come back at night to start uh, the real shooting. And uh, uh, once I decided the specific view, which part to shoot about, the shooting part for me I think is, is quite simple. I always do multiple exposures with different combination no matter the color or weight part I choose to light up. And uh, the way, actually, why I choose this way to shoot is because of the location is not easy to visit. And I just want to make sure I have all the possibilities I want to get them all. And um, I do the stacking in my camera. There is a function that you can overlay all the exposures and it will help me to check how will be the final result will look like. That is what I do during the shooting part. And once I finish everything during the trip, I'll just go back home and start the post-processing part. And I'll check all the exposures, all the pieces I have got during the trip, and then to select which ones are the ones I want to use for my final work. Like, for example, I may shoot from 20 to maybe 30 different exposures but in the end I may only use three to maybe five uh, in my final photo. Uh, I enjoy doing this at home when I'm relaxing and in the very comfortable environment 
my head will be more clear about what do I want to create. If during the trip, I think at least uh, one more people shooting together with me, I have to say that working alone is still too hard for me because staying in the abundant places, especially at night, is still quite dangerous and not to mention I don't know how to drive so I need help to visit the place and uh, sometimes I'm a bit too short uh, for accessing the place uh, especially when it requires me to go over the fence or climbing the wall or go through the window and um, I think during the shooting part it is okay for me to do it alone but it's always nice to have a company with me at least to be the model So like what I have mentioned, there are many topics I'm really into, like many abundant places or uh, the brutalist architecture or Soviet monument or some urban structures, for example, like the towers or the bridge, the dam or even tetrapods. And I really love those kind of things. For me, they are like the hidden treasure and I would like to collect them all, all over the world. And uh, so I would like to say, I don't actually choose location for light painting. I choose the locations that I would like to visit and then I use the light painting technique to show the place. And so uh, I shoot most of my pictures during my trip, but I have to say every day I spend a lot of time on finding the location if I have time. So I got most of the information online either from the related website, database, or the community, the, the urbex community, or from like Facebook group, or even Instagram. So every day I check a lot of information like this, and, uh, and then I collect all of them into my Pinterest to uh, save them into different like folders, or different category, or different countries. Yeah, that's how I collect all the information. And uh, once I decided which country I would like to travel to, uh, I think one or two months before the trip, I like to try to find the exact location of all the places I have collected before, and then mark all of them on my Google map. And uh, sometimes it's easy to locate, but I think most of the time there is no direct information about the, the real, the exact coordinate about the location. So I just open my Google map and check in satellite view, try to find the place little by little. And sometimes when you check the Google map, you can find some new place, it's like surprise. And um, before the trip, I would like to also check how is the accessibility of each location. Uh, like sometimes the place has been demolished or with much more strict security or maybe the entrance has been sealed last month so I want to make sure I can still go there and one thing is important for night photography I think is uh, you need to check about the light environment at night for example uh, sometimes there will be the street light or the artificial light surrounding it may ruin the picture at night yeah, anyway just a very addicted to doing all this. I think it gives me equal pleasure as actually shooting during the trip. And I remember sometimes it would go a little bit mental. There was one time I meant to travel to Berlin for a trip, but right before I depart, I lost my passport. So it turned out I stuck at home. I spent my entire vacation working on my Google map for seven days. I actually marked 500 tetrapods in Japanese coast. I think the first photographer I have to mention about is Mark O'Neill. And as what I said, he was the one who introduced me what is light painting, and I learned a lot from him. And uh, we traveled together in many countries for many trips, and uh, he helped me a lot. And uh, I have to say that he's a very dedicated photographer and very hardcore. And he's 
like painting skill is just excellent. And uh, I think the interesting part is there are many times we are shooting the same object, but the final result looks very different. I really enjoy the light on his photos, uh, which is very accurate and subtle and uh, just elegant. That is something I would like to stare for a very long time. And from the like, painting community, there are many artists I learned from and I really admire the work. For example, like uh, Palatet or Eric Petty or Tim Gambo and so many others. And for me, it's they, they never stop trying new ways to shoot and they always can create the unique style of their own. There are two more artists I would like to mention. Uh, who are not light painters, but I think light takes a very important role in their work. The first one is the famous Japanese artist Tsukimoto. Uh, in his series Theater, I just love it. I think that is that kind of work will make you feel really deeply touched. And I think uh, the other one is an American CG artist whose name is Beepo. He was trying to create one image every day for over 10 years and I really love the color and the style in his pictures and especially the atmosphere he created always reminds me Blade Runner which is actually my favorite movie. There are many experiences that I will never forget about while well, painting and I think most of them because of the environment is very extreme and the process was quite tough for me and uh, like a lot of them related with either super cold or radioactive or mountain climbing or just chasing by the security guys but I think among all these my most unforgettable memory is still my first time visiting Busluja and as what I said, Busluja was my first time for experiencing what is like painting and urbexing. And people will just never forget their first love. And everything began there. You know, quite a lot. I do post-processing quite a lot on my picture because the way how I shoot is the, the multiple exposure stacking. So post-processing is a very necessary step on my work and it makes everything easier when I'm shooting and uh, gives me the chance to or more possibilities to create things that I want. About the straight out of, out of camera thing, I know people had a lot of debate about this topic and uh, I do admire those people who have the skill to do the one single exposure. Uh, but for me, my opinion to all this is very simple. Do whatever you like, because no matter like painting or any kind of art form, it's just a very personal game to play. And I think everybody has the right to set up their own rule to play their own game. So as long as you're honest or happy about what you're doing now, then I think it's fine. But I think when it comes to a public competition, if the rule set clear about no Photoshop or no post-processing, then everybody obey the same rule to play the game. And uh, that's it, to make it fair. Yeah. The camera I'm using now is the Nikon D810, and uh, the lens I'm using is a 15mm Zeiss wide angle lens, and sometimes I use another uh, 2470 lens. And uh, for the lights part, I think in the first or second years when I just started light painting, uh, I tried a lot of different light source. But in recent years, I tried to reduce it into minimal. Most of the time, I only carry two or three torches for shooting. I think the reason is because one is I don't want to carry too much stuff, too much gear in my bag, which is too heavy for me. And another thing is, I think more and more, I really enjoy the most simple light effect. And um, on my picture, I think I 
only add the extra light trails on my picture if I think the effect, the effect it itself really fits the scene. And um, for example, I remember there was one picture I took in Ukraine. It is a, uh, it was in a crematory. So I use a one meter long fiber light to simulate the fire effect. Mm, for a long time, I'm using a signature, which is called part-time human being. So I show my human side on my daily life, my work, my family, and I keep my inhuman side energy, I export those energy on photography or on exploration. And um, my goal is always is try to balance those two sides well. And I think they both formed who I am. I would say I'm quite lucky and most of the feedbacks I got from outside um, so far are still pretty positive which I really appreciate people who like my work and um, talking about the critic part I know it may sound a bit cliche but I do think the people who criticize my work the most is myself um, especially every time after the trip I get back home I feel excited in the beginning, but once I put my photos on the big screen to check, then I realize, oh my god, there are so many flaws on my photos, which are really annoying. So I will try to remember the problem and try to avoid it happen the same for the next time when I travel again. And uh, I think sometimes it goes even worse. I sometimes question myself what am I doing, why am I doing all this but you know this kind of question you will never or really hard to have an answer so nowadays I'll just try to not to think too much not to question myself too much not to think about the meaning of it just shooting, keep shooting yeah. I think the best part of working with light is it always gives me the possibilities to create something new. You know, there are so many places in the world I would like to visit, but if i shooting during the daylight, for me it's more like documenting the place, documenting how it looks like in normal life. But with like painting, I can create something different, something belongs to me. Yeah, that, that is the part I really enjoy a lot. And uh, talking about the most challenging part, I think for me, it's always the physical side. And walking in the dark without falling, for me, is still really hard. <laughs> My advice would be, I think in the beginning, you try to explore more or ex experiment more as much as you could and uh, after that you will find the way or the kind which one is your favorite so after that try to stick on it and create your own style